The Atheist Debates Patreon Project presents The Mirror Question. So, not too long ago, I was surfing around YouTube and came across a video that addressed a question about mirrors. And it was something that I've seen asked and answered several times in the past, but you, you know how it is, the internet's huge. And if one video solved a, a problem for everybody, well, then there would only be one video on the subject or you know, maybe there'd be a hundred, but only one of them would have the views. The question that was presented is, why do mirrors reverse things left to right, but not top to bottom? Now, this question intrigues me, not because of what it's actually asking, but because of what's underneath. And so while I am going to answer the question, I'm not going to pretend to give a full, you know, in-depth assessment of this issue. Uh, there are plenty of other videos out there that have already done that in detail. For some of you, this is the first time that you've ever heard the question or thought about the question. For some of you, you've probably already seen some of those videos. Maybe you thought about it years ago. Uh, maybe you solved it for yourself years ago. But for some of you, me asking that question is going to be the first time that you were presented with it. And for those people, some of you are going to have this response of, Wow, that's an, that's an interesting question. I, I never thought of that. And why, why wouldn't I think of that? And others, when you hear it, you're probably going to say, Oh, well, I, I know. And some of you are still confused. That's the point of this. The truth of the matter is that mirrors don't actually reverse anything. The, the Why do they reverse left and right, not to top to bottom? The reason it's a curious question that some of you had never even thought of before is because it's wrong. The question is a bad question. Oh, wait a minute, there's no bad questions. Yes, there are. There are ill-formed questions that carry a lot of baggage and assumptions into the question, and that biases our ability to find the right answer. It's like the person who called into the atheist experience years ago and said, well, if God didn't create the universe, who did? And by asking who, you're already narrowing the list of answers to that a, a who type thing rather than a what type of thing. So let's deal with the mirror question first. Why do mirrors reverse things left, right, and not top to bottom? The truth of the matter is that they don't do that. And you already know this. You instinctively know this, even if you're not aware that you instinctively know it. Because we've all held a mirror, or hopefully we've had a mirror that we could turn, maybe a makeup mirror, we move it around. You can take the mirror that's on the wall, rotate it 90 degrees, it's still rotating or it's still apparently, air quotes, reversing left to right and not top to bottom. So it's clear that's not what a mirror does. The truth is, mirrors reflect. They don't reverse. It's not like there's a mirror that takes what's in there and turns it around and sends it back to you. But we perceive it that way enough that the question intrigues us, but not enough that too many people spend too much time on this question because somehow, Somewhere deep down inside, you know there's something flawed about the question. That this doesn't make sense. This, it's impossible that it would reverse left to right, not top to bottom. How does the mirror know how it's oriented? Is there something about this? Mirrors don't reverse. They reflect. And I'm, I'm curious, I haven't investigated, but I'm curious whether or not this question's more intriguing in English than it is in perhaps other languages. That maybe there's something about the similarity of the words reflect and reverse or our perception of it, or how we occasionally equate those things. Because when we talk about mirroring as a principle, we know that what we're doing is reflecting back the other person's words, their, their, their actions, their character. We're not reversing it. You know, that's the, mirroring is a, is a good tactic to use in conversation, where you are reflecting back the type of person that they are, the type of person they want to be. You're, you're reflecting back their words, this sort of questioning thing, and doing it fairly. You're not reversing. It's not like if somebody says, hi, how are you? You're like, screw you, dude! That's not mirroring. That's just being a dick. But the confusion and the similarity between those words, I think, contributes to, to it a little bit. The other reason that we kind of intuitively know that this is a bad question isn't just because we've held mirrors and can turn mirrors. But something about it tricks us into thinking that a reflection is a reversal. And I think I know why. Because most of the time, when you're looking at a mirror, you're seeing yourself. 
The truth is the mirror doesn't reverse anything. The light goes in wherever the light goes in and it all comes back out. The angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. You can hold a mirror to 45 and see off that way. If the mirror is, perpend or is parallel to your, your face, your, your plane of your field of vision, basically what goes in on the left will come back out on the left. What goes in on the right will come back out on the right. There are two things that make it seem intuitively like a mirror is reversing. The first one is if you have like words on your shirt, well, they're reversed. Yes, they are. But if you wrote a word on a piece of paper so that you could read it and you hold it up to a mirror and you look in the mirror, that word will appear, air quotes again, reversed. Is it? No, because you are, it would be reversed if you could see through the paper. It's coming back exactly the way it's going in. There's no flipping involved with this mirror thing. That's one of the reasons that I think this question intrigues people and, and it kind of feels intuitive. Yeah, mirrors do reverse things. And the other one is that when you're looking at a mirror, you're seeing you. And we are used to, if we see a person, a face looking at us, their right hand is where, on the side where our left hand is and their left hand is on the side where our right hand is. We, our brain does something and says, I'm looking at a person looking at me. And clearly, if I've raised my right hand, that person must be raising their left hand. Your brain does a whole bunch of gymnastic flips because somewhere in there is this baggage. There's a person looking at me and that's their left hand and this is my right hand, so it's been reversed. This is amplified by the fact that words are reversed. And it's amplified further in some by people who have studied not necessarily in detail, but light refraction in other media. For example, if you have a glass of water and you move it in front of a scene or a word, it will reverse it, flip it. And you can go through the science. There'll be other videos out there that'll show you how the light comes in, bounces around and creates this uh, skewed reversed image, etc. That's about distortion and refraction, not reflection. There's reflection involved in that refraction. But all of these things come together so that when somebody hears for the first time, why does a mirror reverse things left to right and not top to bottom? Most people will go, wow, that is weird. Why would that be? I've never even thought of that. That's a strange thing. The reason we're talking about this here on Atheist Debates video is not because it has anything to do with atheism but it does have something very important to do with skepticism. And that is any time we are going to be investigating something, we have to make sure that the questions we're asking don't unnecessarily narrow the search criteria that we should be using to find a solution. And so when someone says, why does a mirror reverse things left to right, but not top to bottom? The first thing we should ask is, is that what's actually happening? Just like when somebody says, if God didn't create the universe, who did? Is that the full set of possible answers? Have we narrowed it? It's all about asking the right questions. If we're not going to ask the right questions, we are going to keep shooting ourselves in the foot looking for answers when we may have excluded the one and only right answer, which is that a mirror doesn't reverse anything. It merely reflects. And light comes out, angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. Yes, I know there are subtle differences. We, you know, maybe there's the thickness of the glass in front of that that's going to change things. That's not the point. There are tons of questions, big questions, that we have to ask. Quite often when we're dealing with apologists and we're trying to analyze their arguments, we see a premise, we see a premise, we see a conclusion. Okay, let's be honest. That rarely happens. In only a handful of debates that I've done, has there actually been an argument that was presented? Here's a premise, here's a premise, here's a conclusion. Blake's done it. There are a few others who've done it. By and large, the discussions that we have about gods and religion and the supernatural and all and woo and all these things, they're colloquial, they're 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 informal conversations. There's no structural syllogism there. This makes it more difficult because it's really easy for someone to ask a question that intuitively sounds like something sends you down a path that is ultimately irrelevant. 
So if you're hanging out with your friends and they say, hey, why does a mirror reverse left to right and not top to bottom? You can just say it doesn't and kind of short circuit the lengthy, but perhaps amusing lesson that's getting ready to come. What do you do when somebody says, well, if God didn't create the universe, who did? You respond with another question. Why are you assuming it's a who? Why do mirrors reverse left and right? Why are you assuming that mirrors reverse, that they reverse left to right? Asking questions back to get clarity about the subject we're talking about, the definitions that we're using, that's probably one of the most important things. I know, hey Matt, you've been doing videos for years now. You've been on the Atheist Experience for 15 years or so. You've been doing these Atheist Debates videos for four years and you are once again explaining to us that we should not only, you know, ask questions and engage in the Socratic method, but this is the best solution. Yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. We've had Anthony Magdabosco on to talk about street epistemology. Uh, I've worked with some of the street epistemology guys um, producing videos. Atheist Vanguard w walks along that line as well. The process of asking questions is probably the most important one we have. And yet, all of us are going to screw it up. First time I heard the question, why do mirrors reverse left to right instead of top to bottom, was maybe four or five years ago when I stumbled across a YouTube video that addressed this. And I have to acknowledge that I went, huh, why would a mirror? That's kind of weird. And then I sat there and thought about it for maybe 10, 15 seconds. And I was like, oh, wait, 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 that's not what they do. And, I, and then that sent me down a path of, ah, that's interesting. But at that point, it was a single YouTube video. What prompted me to do this is that I've seen four of those videos pop up in my feed, all produced in the last year or two, gaining popularity. Now, I think the reason that's happening is because it does feel like an intriguing question, something that we perhaps need to solve. And it is something we need to solve. Not the answer to the question, don't, not the physics of light, but this issue of asking the right questions. Because you can't have any confidence that you are on a pursuit that will likely get to the right answer if you've started with the wrong question. I remember an episode, a, a, a CNN news thing, where there were two atheists and a Jew standing around as the panel. And the question that scrolled across the screen behind them, and I've talked about this before as well, is why do atheists inspire such hatred? Now, the fact that there wasn't an atheist there to address it annoyed the crap out of me. I was absolutely livid. I sat there going, oh, great. Here you guys are on CNN asking a question about hatred and, the, and atheists. And that's when it hit me. They didn't ask the right question. Not only did they get the wrong panelists in, let's get two Christians and a Jew to talk about atheists. If we'd had two atheists and a Christian in to talk about a, a Jewish issue, uh, there'd have been some livid people. The question was wrong. It shouldn't be, why do atheists inspire such hatred? It should be, why is their hatred directed at atheists? Because now it includes the possibility that the answer is, because atheists inspire it. Atheists do all kinds of stuff and they bring this on themselves. That is one possible answer. But it doesn't, as asked, why do atheists inspire such hatred? It assumes that atheists are the actors doing the inspiring. The question is loaded. And what it's loaded for is to hide the fact that maybe one of the answers, one of the likely answers for why there's hatred directed at atheists is because religious people cannot stand the fact that the atheist community at large are becoming more and more robust, more vocal, more animated, and more, sorry, in your face in pointing out problems with religious doctrine as it relates to government, as it relates to the daily life of people. Maybe what's inspiring the hatred is the Bible. Maybe it's inspiring Christians and Jews to not want to associate with atheists. Maybe it's inspiring an attitude that you're going to be persecuted by the devil for standing up for God. And so if the atheists are saying stuff about you, that is the devil using the atheist with or without their knowledge 
to persecute you. And now the hatred that you direct at atheists is somehow righteous. What's the right answer? I'm not going to pretend to know. I think it's probably incredibly complicated. I think there are atheists who probably do inspire some hatred. I think there are religious people who, without even realizing it, without even thinking that what they're directing at atheists is hatred, they think they're right and they're just, and they're just responding to this bad thing, even though they don't necessarily think the people's bad. Because, you know, we can love the sinner and hate the sin type of thing. The answers are going to be more complex than our simplified versions of the questions are going to make them. And as it turns out, the answer to the mirror question is more complex as well. And it's not just the physics. It has to do with psychology of what we see when we look in a mirror and the assumptions that we make about how things work. All of that comes together, not to make mirrors reflect, re reverse things left to right, but to make our brains interpret what's going on as if it's a reversal. So the next time you're driving along a highway and you look up in your rearview mirror and you see an ambulance behind you and you can read the word, even though if you were to turn your head around and look at it, it would look reversed. Think about the direct reflection and why that's backward. But also remember that this is about making sure we're asking the right questions. And that sometimes, no matter how intriguing a question is or how much you might want to sit there and ponder it, the question is just bad. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. This video is made possible by supporters of the Atheist Debates Patreon project. You can find more information and add your support at patreon.com slash atheistdebates.